Hello World Wide Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And now that things are finally getting back on schedule, I can actually review movies that have not only been major requests, but have been sitting in my movie collection for months, mocking me. Such as today's movie, Tremors Shrieker Island. Originally titled Tremors Island Fury, this would be the seventh film of the Tremors franchise, having released just last year in 2020. Michael Gross returns as Bert Gummer, Graboids abound, and this time they mix things up by setting it all on a tropical paradise. I mean, they already did Africa and the Arctic in the last two movies, and uh, the fourth one was set in the Old West, so I guess they're kind of running out of settings for this story to take place in. Unless the next three movies are Graboids Take Manhattan, Tremors Goes to Hell, and let's not forget, Ass Blasters in Space. Either way, the basic plot here isn't something we haven't heard before. Graboids are at it again, and Burt Gummer has come out of retirement once more to deal with that problem. However, this is a special kind of Graboid, as the real monster, Mankind, is doing it once more. Damn you, human race! Anyway, let's take a look at Tremors, Shrieker Island, and see just what humanity has screwed up this time. We open up to a tropical jungle, and a man running as fast as he can! I gotta give the editor props for this sequence. If you think about it, in no single shot is this guy doing anything nearly as impressive as the editing is making it seem. However, it turns out he is, in fact, the bait for a graboid hunt on this island, being led by none other than the island's owner, Bill, played by Richard Brake. So you know he's crazy, evil, or both. The prey's approaching the kill box. Activate the poison darts. Jeez, Richard, been playing a few too many open world games if you think I can just stop to craft your special ammo in the middle of the boss fight. Which they unload on the Precambrian monstrosity, and... Wow. You know, for a second there, I was under the impression this was a high-budget movie. Either way, after loading it full of poison, it seems to have slipped away, so they figure eh, it's just playing hard to get. But Anna, played by Cassie Clare, feels like their clients, while paying them out the ass, are not taking the hunt seriously, and something about it just doesn't feel right to her. Eh, it's nothing a little alcohol can't fix. And we move on to more impressive landscape shots so we can introduce the good guys for this movie. Jasmine Welker, played by Caroline Langrish, asks Freddy, played by Jackie Cruz, where, oh where, her team leader Jimmy has run off to. Turns out he got completely fit chased the night before and is played by John Hedder. You know, Napoleon Dynamite from the hit movie Napoleon Dynamite. You hung over? No. Yes. <sighs> Just sends a shiver down my spine when I know within the first 12 seconds of meeting a guy, he is definitely the comic relief for the movie. Seems they detected some seismic activity, but the volcano looks like it's still nice and dormant, so they don't pay it any mind. Something far more important is afoot. What's Bill doing over there? That's Bill's private island, Jazz. You know the deal. No trespassing. Let's go see what he's up to. I mean, there's absolutely nothing the characters know at this point that would justify this kind of behavior, but eh, maybe Jazz is just a busybody. Boating over, conveniently enough, right at the one part of the island with the signs, Private Island, No Trespassing, they make their way up the river, and god damn, Thailand is beautiful. Someone tell me who did the location scouting for this movie? I can't find it online, and they deserve a ton of credit for the work they did. Anyway, they move forward on foot, Jazz, Jimmy, and Miscellaneous. Before long, they find... Looks like something punched its way out from inside this thing. A dead graboid which, as we know from the mountains and mountains of Tremolore that exists already, is <laughs> only the first of their problems. But not only is it a dead Graboid, it's a weird fucking dead Graboid. Huge! And with an exoskeleton. No time for that now, though. Strange noises abound. Okay, I'm gonna start leading by example and run. I suggest you do the same. Okay, just because you have the spare red shirt doesn't mean that they have to spend their last moments of life witnessing you flexing your plot armor in front of them as they flee, but oh, who could have seen this coming? The extra character they brought just in case the body count needed a rise is attacked by Shriekers and killed in a nicely clean PG-13 manner. But now Napoleon Dynamite has to deal with the horror of Shriekers taking his friends from him. I tried to help him, but I tried to help him. Way to drool out your lines, man. Was that even supposed to happen? I got, the, I got this strange feeling that it just did and the director was there like, I love it, use it. I did my best, I did, Jazz, but... There was nothing you could do. Oh, come on, there's plenty of things you can do to kill one Shrieker. Seven movies in, we've seen plenty of examples. But Jazz says they must find Bert Gummer. 
can't get Travis because they kind of sort of got locked up in the interim. Fun fact, I tried to find out if Jamie Kennedy got in trouble with the law, and all I found was there are a lot of criminals out there named Jamie Kennedy. Where is Bert, though? Exactly where a prepper would retire if their biggest goal in life was to stay off the grid and say no to government bureaucracy. Living that glorious lifestyle from Castaway. For a second there, I thought I was going to get cannibalized, but uh, I'm not, right? Nah, they're saving zombie Bert Gummer for the next movie. They also established the only reason they were able to find this island was because Bert's son Travis was kind enough to let them know. Anyway, long story short, Bert, we got a graboid problem and kind of need some help with that. Look, it's your destiny, Mr. Gummer. Your destiny. I always get the feeling that scenes like this are just reenactments of the studios begging the actor to come back for just one more movie. While John is convincing Michael that the paycheck is very much worth it, Jazz is back on the island interrogating Bill about the graboids he illegally imported for their hunt. Well, and bred and genetically modified to be SUPER graboids, because you can't have a monster movie sequel these days without turning the damn thing super. Shut this hunt down now. Yeah. I can't do that. We're only like 20 minutes into this movie and we gotta give the audience the money's worth. I just can't believe you've done this, Bill. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Bill also was sure to jam the comms grid so their hunt can go uninterrupted. So there's no going back now. But it's been a while since the body count last rose, so uh, that night, while one of the hunting party is hiding in the porta potty. <laughs> Okay, so the Graboid got him without breaking any of the ground or structure around him. I guess he could have sent a tentacle up through that. Uh, could have gone around it, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, but Bert's son, Travis, or Travis Welker? <laughs> this is Jasmine Welker. Yeah, that's a fine how do you do. And a conversation that Bert is not about to have. Okay. Henceforth, we will limit our conversation to pre-Cambrian life forms, understood? Right then, graboids and a whole ass ton of single-celled organisms. Going over the entire history of graboids is a lot though, but fortunately Bert just so happened to keep a copy of the graboid biology video for just such an occasion, getting everyone up to snuff on the history of graboid attacks, the shriekers, and lest we forget, the ass blaster. That way he can both give the presentation and get himself cleaned up for the adventure ahead and to make a good first impression to the big bad, I suppose. Bill Davidson, billionaire philanthropist and uh, hunter of all things exotic. Bert Gummer. Finally, the biggest two actors on set come face to face in adversarial positions so that they can flex and find out who is the best actor of all. To the script of Tremor 7. Well, I hope they like a challenge. Bill swears the Graboids can't get out as he's got it all under control. But Bert is unconvinced. He intends to take these Graboids out himself with this ragtag group of scientists. Uh, there's another problem. We're, we're, we're completely gun-less. <sighs> Their current list of armaments includes spitballs, rubber bands, and hopes and dreams. Well, they do have a little World War II bomb shelter with old and not particularly safe dynamite on hand. Flamethrowers, machetes, pretty much everything but a rifle. Anyway, back with the hunters. Or should I say, the hunted. Man, they're not even trying to mask the similarities at this point. They hunt my heat signature. Like predators. Okay, guys, this is universal. That was Fox. Are you sure you're allowed to say this? Oh, wait. Has Disney bought them both by now? This is real life, son, not some Hollywood fairy tale. You got that? It's not some silly fantasy story like Predator. This is Tremors. This is serious business. Before long, though, the Shriekers attack! And now their shrieking isn't just annoying, it's one of their attacks! Stunning their prey while they go in for the kill. However, Bert and company swoop in to save the day, throwing flames and firing tracker darts. But before they can finish them off, Bert hears a graboid nearby. <laughs> Ah! 
Ah oh, man, they got not Jesse Ventura. Why does it always happen like this? Sacrificing a flamethrower to distract the beast, they blow it the fuck up! And then it rains graboid guts. So, uh, that hunting trip's over. Just in time to get news that, hey, they've detected a ridiculously huge super, super graboid. And it kind of sort of got off Dark Island and they ain't got to deal with it. Bill, however, intends to finish the hunt and would like Bert to stop interfering. Because, uh, I guess he forgot what just happened five minutes ago. Well, I guess we're at an impasse, huh? See, this is the trouble with not having guns. Well, you can't fully blame them. I mean, whose bright idea was it to go into retirement and, oh yeah, not have a single firearm to defend your island with, relying instead on a pointy stick? And they shoot him! With a tranquilizer dart, of course. That way, he can't interfere. Though some cracks are showing in Bill's hunting party, and his spare geneticist that helped make these things thinks maybe they shouldn't have. And Bert had a point. After all, they even have Bert Gummer Day. He's a superhero in some circles. He's a paranoid militant with more guns and ammo than any sane person should have. Bill, I really don't think you have the authority to speak about sane people here. But where is Bert? Tied up in the bunker with all his colleagues. Zip tied anyway. But wait, Bert's shoes are actually Jimmy's, and it just so happens to be laced with 550 paracord, allowing them to cut the zip ties. Someone googled Prepper Hacks while scripting this. Unlike our bad guys who are still having trouble in their hunt because it's all they've done all movie. Nevertheless, with enough flares and stupid people, you can still set up some impressive looking shots. God! Awful helpful, too, that that subterranean monster just decided to lift up and stand there on his little tippy toes and pose for no apparent reason. Now, it's not even the one that kills the man. That's some random one that came in from the side. Finally, a hunt-worthy predator, huh? Ow! I swear, this man gets paid by the ow. This is finally just a bit much for Anna, though, who leaves Bill's hunting party, believing the man to have gone insane. Joke's on her. That requires him to have been sane at some point. Also, while Britt got out of the zip ties, it turns out the door's locked from the outside. What is this, a child's safety lock bunker? Well, either way, Anna can immediately show up, opening the door for them and joining their side, meaning the zip tie thing really didn't amount to much. She could have easily freed them from that as well. No bother. The big problem is the Graboid trying to break into the bunker! They have to shut down the generator. But before they can do that, they have to all pull out their cell phones for that handy-dandy LED light. Look, give me a break, my cell's at zero percent. I'm more confused as to why the hell everyone on this island has cell phones. I'm pretty sure you don't have coverage. From here, they figure it's time to make the bomb shelter a graboid lure with the generator and use the dynamite to take it out. Thus, using the conveniently established handy-dandy lighter, Bert tosses a stick into the pile and they must run! the third Graboid, leaving only one remaining, the Queen Graboid. Uh, the, the super, super Graboid. Oh, well, we didn't actually see which one they took out here, so... Uh, leaving the super, super Graboid. And there's just Bill and one dude left to eat on the baddies' side, so Bill does as he does and uses him as bait to try and take the Graboid out. With a, a fucking handgun, really? Surprise, this doesn't work. But Bert has come to reason with this unreasonable man once more. Bill, Bill, come on. I got this. But oh, would you look at that? It turns out he was completely out of his mind and running all the way here was a fucking waste of time. Unless he needed to get his cardio for the day, I guess. So now Bert and the good guys are the only ones left. Why didn't come after you? You're obviously the alpha. She's culling the weakest from the herd first. Oh crap, that means I'm next. Well, at least you can't fault the character for being stupid. The first priority, however, is to take out every last shrieker on that island. Fortunately for them, today's gonna be really fucking hot, and therefore, the shrieker's heat tracking will be impeded by the ambient temperature. But before they can go off on this mission, we gotta stop to have a heart-to-heart -heart between Bert and Jazz about their son. I didn't want you to feel trapped into something you weren't ready for or didn't want. 
understatement. That's why I went it alone. We do the best we can with what we got. Just so everyone knows, it's okay to be a single mother. I was raised by a single mom. Excuse me, single moms are totally badass. Yeah, okay. Just so everyone knows, it's okay to be a single mother. Still, now that we've established this would have made a fine Mother's Day review, they head off to Shrieker Island. The hell are you doing? Put mud on me like Arnold did in Predator. I mean, I don't want those creatures seeing my heat signature. Okay, now I'm just expecting the Shriekers to do that thing from Predator 2 where they're gonna just flip through different vision modes until they can see them anyway. Bert joins in on the mud rub like they're playing a game of Predator Hunting Grounds, and not a moment too soon as they hear Shriekers all around them. Let's go medieval on these ugly slime bags. Thought we were going Rambo. Oh, huh. You go Rambo. I've got the chainsaw. I'm going Evil Dead. Well, I guess that just leaves me to go all dirty hairy on him. They also pop in some earplugs so we never have to worry about that shrieker shrieking attack again. That can be confined to only one scene. Thus, the action scene breaks out. It's heroes versus shriekers in a fight to the death. Bert slashes away with his machete while Jimmy lays waste to the beasts with a motherfucking chainsaw. While this is going on, the team back at base is luring and detecting the Graboid Queen. So, time to finish off the rest of the Shriekers with a flamethrower, burning them all to death! Until it runs out of fuel, that is. Damn, Burt Gunn is channeling Jason Statham's character from The Expendables all of a sudden. Who needs guns? When you got Pennsylvania Steel. Uh, no, 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 no. Guns still really would have helped a lot in this situation. One cave of Shriekers down, that's probably the whole island. I'm just gonna assume this archipelago works under Korean MMORPG rules. They return to camp and learn that they just so happen to walk in right where the Queen Graboid is lurking. You've been waiting for me, haven't you? Yeah, it must get tiring for Graboids eating victim after victim, all the while most of them don't even have a single line of dialogue. They do have a plan on how to kill her, a plateau. Ever seen the first movie? That, but again. Fortunately, this Graboid is only interested in Bert, and can tell where he is, but uh, it just doesn't feel sporting if he's not making vibrations, I guess. That allows everyone else to set out and get the climax all prepared for them. Once they get far enough along, Bert moves out and the Graboid moves in. Hopping on Handy Dandy horseback, he flees the beast, luring it to the final trap. What's the plan? The plan is to get her to charge us. To draw it to the edge of the cliff, and over. It involved an explosion as well in the original trap. I mean, that's what hurt the Graboid and disoriented it enough to run off the cliff, but eh. Jimmy, though, intends to take command of this situation. Bert obviously doesn't like this idea. I'm faster. I'm wiser. I'm younger. I... You got me there. But while feeding Graboids dynamite has worked before, I don't think this is exactly how you're supposed to do it. Eventually, they agree to do it as a team, and the beast charges. Fleeing towards the cliff, Bert pushes the kid out of the way and flips the beast the bird. <laughs> and gets eaten. Well, it's not Bert's first rodeo down the gullet of a Precambrian monster, he'll be fine. The plan successful, the Graboid falls off the cliff, crashes down, and explodes into a bunch of tiny, meaty chunks. Man, these Gushers commercials are getting weird. So, happy ending! The Queen Graboid is dead, and the world is safe from the scourge of mutant genetically enhanced Precambrian predators. Assuming, of course, that that one cave really did have all the Shriekers in it. But wait, they can't find Bert Gummer anywhere. And no, this isn't a, oh, he was actually just fine waiting just out of frame bit. They legit only managed to find his hat and the sunglasses and have a goddamn funeral for the guy before the movie ends on a montage memorial of all of Burt Gummer's best moments throughout the entire Tremors franchise. So, uh, yeah, he's dead as shit. Which really recontextualizes that whole happy, happy gore rain scene. Yeah. Anyway, that was... Tremors, Shrieker Island. It's not exactly the high point of the series, but it's entertaining nonetheless. I think we're well past wondering if the series about Graboids and Ass Blasters is going to lean into legit tension and meaningful character interaction, or just cheesy fun and popcorn entertainment. 
Despite that, Trimmer and Shrieker Island kinda gives us a little of both. The meat of the running time is just fun times, entertaining characters in beautiful settings dealing with a graboid of the week. The bad guys aren't deep or interesting, they're just there to be bad, make bad decisions, and die, so the heroes can finally save the day. The downside, though, is even while such a simple premise can be immensely entertaining if done right, most of the acting on display is not the greatest, which is actually surprising considering the pedigree of a lot of the people on set, which leaves me wondering how many takes were allocated during production. Still, while the concept and presentation aren't much deeper than your average EDF mission, there is a hint of something deeper after a while. The strained past between Bert and Jazz, the show of care they both have for their son, and of course the fact that the movie has the balls to kill off Bert Gummer. If you enjoy the Tremors series, that ending highlight reel is gonna get you. At the end of the day, Tremors Shrieker Island is an enjoyable film, but not one you necessarily have to pay attention to. A great watch with friends and fans of Cheese, coming in at three motherfucking chainsaws to the Shrieker out of five. Now, if only some of those Tremors projects with Kevin Bacon would get off the ground, we might still have some life left in this franchise. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember, never, ever trust a character played by Richard Brake. <laughs>